How's it going, friends and family of the internet? Welcome to the Real AF TV podcast, show about fishing and random takes from the land of 10,000 lakes. I'm one of your hosts, Josh LeBah. And I am caught off guard again. My <laughs> name is Tim Wagner, and I forget about what we're doing a lot. <laughs> 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 we always start having a conversation then i look down i'm like 10 seconds that's a move there's already that's my cue that's my cue where i'm in i'm on i'm in it <laughs> <laughs> oh shit i love it all right tim yep. we're gonna jump right in with the fishing news here wasting no time fishing news stop don't 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 stop me if you've heard this one before Fifteen thousand pounds of carp removed Again. Again. Yeah. Get so, them out of here. You've heard this one before. We I, I, I saw it and I was like, did they just like redo the same article? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's why I was like, where's the catch? Because you're just like, you'd stop me if you don't stop me if you heard it. And then you start saying <laughs> it. And I'm like, I have heard it. Right, but you but you said don't stop me. So but, I'm but don't but don't stop me because that's my fishing news this week. So it is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Southwest Media again, uh, the the uh, media company from around my area here. Okay. And uh, it, yes, it sounded very familiar. And I clicked on it. And I'm like, okay, this is kind of weird. Why did they do this? And I just want to say, go to YouTube, go to youtubecom slash slash at real af tv remember real like fish and real to take you right to our site in the link of the video of this podcast right i put the link to our fishing news and there's just way better pictures this time Ooh, okay that was cool last time they were just like pictures of some people on ice like you couldn't really tell so this sure. time i was like hey definitely got to make sure oh, go over to right. youtube link in the description i forgot Check about that out. part that they were snatching them up through the ice yeah. yeah yeah so yeah there, 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 there's some review here uh for sure and it's a it's a carp sane is that's what i looked it up it's a carp sane and oh. what they're doing is they're just netting them that's like the word for it it's a type of fishing how do you spell that what are you saying carp sane like s-a-i-n sane sane S -A -I -N. You, yeah but you spell it no that's how i'm saying it sorry that's that's saying... how i have it down for pronunciation <laughs> Oh, I th I thought you were gonna have like a, uh, like some sort of just be like yeah, the early carp gets the uh, picked off through the ice or something. Because I thought you were saying, saying like saying, but like <laughs> kind of like with some twang. And I'm like, what? Are we, what are you saying? <laughs> Not saying, saying. No, saying. S e i n e. It's like a method of fishing. It's this method okay. of fishing, okay. basically. Okay. It, it, yeah. And so, yeah, we don't do much of it up here. So it's like, it's not really a thing. Um, okay. So. Yeah, the, I've never heard that word before. No, you heard it last time we did this, but. Oh, just, yeah, right. I'm sure. <laughs> right, but yes, it doesn't sink that, in. That makes sense. No, no, obviously not. <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't sink in because it's such a fucking weird word. And you talk about it one time quick on a podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, I'm, last time you said it, I might even just grazed past it or not even brought it up you might have said it and i've just been like it was carp saying he, some carp saying he for okay. he forget to say the saying <laughs> I, I don't know i can't i do i do remember the, them getting pulled through the ice so i remember that but yeah yeah for that sure. word didn't stick for sure mm. <laughs> that's okay it didn't stick with me either i had to relook that shit up and everything so <laughs> <laughs> here we are so we got spring lake we got upper prior lake this is where they're cutting the big ass hole, like a big rectangle hole in the ice. Then they have these yep. smaller holes drilled alongside it. I encourage you to go read uh, the listeners to go read because uh, they explained a little bit more about how it works. I know last time we were like, how do they get the net under and stuff like that? I mm. still didn't really get it. So I'm just going to sort of read this and then go read it in context. But it says, okay, two smaller holes are then, so you cut the big rectangle hole, right? And yep. This is pretty much a quote straight from the article. Two smaller holes are then drilled alongside the initial larger hole, and the net is then pushed through the holes with a stick. The top of the net has floaters, and the bottom of the nets have weights. Sure. The process is then repeated until the fishermen get close to the shoreline, and the net is wrapped around, making a wall, 
and then they just pull the fish up through the big hole. Oh. Okay. 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 I think I get it. Like you just kind of like still can't picture that in my head. I'm kind of picturing it like as long as you keep the net underneath the water the whole time. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you're not pulling Mm -hmm. it out. Like you put the net down through the hole and then you're just using those holes to maneuver the net with sticks slowly from like point A to like the shore. Oh, and then eventually drop the net in the big hole. Push it over to the small holes and then just keep pushing that bitch yeah, just all keep the way. Pushing the sh- it. Oh, that's probably what it's trying to say. That's how I'm picturing it mm-hmm. is because they're saying like making a mm-hmm. wall, like you're basically just forcing them into the shallow water until I don't, they must have a big hole cut in the shallow water to pull them all out then. No, because they loop it back around. Like they just pull that net back around to the big hole. So like they... They'll go to the shoreline. Yeah. So somehow they make it, and I don't know how this part works, but somehow they like loop it around because it says the the process repeated until the fishermen get close to the shoreline and the net is wrapped around making a wall. So maybe they go to the shoreline and then they walk it across and come back up. So there's like a big U shape of holes. I don't know. Maybe. And then they just pull them up through. They pull them up through the big rectangle yeah. hole that they cut which is in the article by the way like go over there you see the images you can see them pulling the carp up through this big hole it's really cool. okay yeah it's super that, dope. Would, that would probably like help yeah to right some pictures <laughs> to try to help the guessing right <laughs> <laughs> but i think we're on to something here it'd be fun to go watch this once just to see so uh yeah so they did the same thing this is still spring lake this is still upper prior lake the same place we talked about last year um, these are all commercial fishermen um, that they go and they have a special license from the Minnesota DNR to do this. This is like something that they do. They are commercial fishermen. That's why they are able to fish like this. Yeah. Um, they pull out all the sport fish, you know, all the walleyes and mm-hmm. sunnies, crappies, mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. gets caught in there. They just toss it back. Um, sure. They also radio like they throw back though. They throw back or they keep the radios on some because that's how they do this. Remember that from last time? Yeah, they radio yeah, yeah. a few of them, and then all of a sudden they'll get a bunch of radios in one spot, and they'll be like, "Okay, there we go. We got a bunch of crop, bunch of carp." Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Spooled up, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I remember that. Like they they move kind of weird or something, but yeah. you have one of them radioed, and then you know, right. like they school together. So okay, we found one. That's where they all are. Right. Exactly. And that's gotta that's gotta be. I mean, you would think that they'd have to have quite a few of them, like radioed like right. that, because right. fifteen thousand pounds, I'm sure, isn't one net haul. I'm sure that's over and over and over. So you pull one out, right? I wonder if they just toss. Maybe they just toss the one with the radio back in. Yeah, that I didn't say it didn't say that, but I did kind of assume yeah. that. I do wonder too. Yeah, like he's just a bloodhound. Go, go find him. Go find him, <laughs> boy. Sniff him out. Yeah, get him, boy. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> so we, uh, oh yeah. So then they send them out to the East Coast, the smaller ones. Those ones get eaten. Um, and the big ones, dude, this was crazy. I don't remember hearing this uh, last time we covered it. The big ones, they send them off. They go They go to the South. Here it said the Carolinas. Yeah. They go to private fishing ponds because the big ones are oh. like great for private fishing. Like people like to go private fish giant carp i guess yeah i mean it's a sport fish for certain people for sure right and yep, i guess that makes sense yep that's all i said too was like, <laughs> yeah okay i guess so all right. that's yeah. also how they get all fucked up in our lakes like this but that's when they're mishandled and everything so i'm mm-hmm. assuming a lot but like yeah so the big ones go on to go be sport fish and the little ones go <laughs> To the East Coast to get eaten. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I totally, I mean, it makes sense that yeah, we would have it like be a sport fish and they fight like hell. So as long as you're okay right. with catching them, right? I get it. Yeah. I would, I would like to fight one someday, like go and fight yeah, a big one. It'd be fun. But also like, I think that's just like a one-time deal for me where <laughs> yeah, it's like you get right. to fight it once and then yeah. you're just like, that was cool. 
I'm I'm good now though. Right. I'm not I'm not a carp fisherman now all of a sudden like yeah. ah, fucking I don't I don't even have like a good analogy to like compare that to. No, I don't like, there's something about like if it's a muskie and you're fighting the muskie and you get it up, you're like, look at that fish. Right. Yep. But a giant carp, you fight it the whole time and then when it surfaces and you see it's a carp, you go, oh, damn it. Shit. Shit. It's that a was carp. A, yeah. <laughs> good fight, buddy, but ugh. <laughs> uh, you're just a shit fish I get. like <laughs> they're just they're just not appealing i don't know you yeah, don't no, get excited no, i'm with you it's just too much work to clean and like i guess i don't really yeah. have a garden but i can bear it i guess it's like i guess it's like my love for like cars too sure. like if i see a hundred thousand dollar sports car mm-hmm. i'm like oh damn look at that in comparison mm-hmm. i see a hundred thousand dollar escalade and I don't even look twice. Yeah, Whatever, you just let dude. it zip right by. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's expensive and big. Whatever, get out of here. Whatever, who cares? <laughs> who cares? Big stupid idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so here's some fun stuff that we didn't have on the last one. So in twenty, they had some numbers at the end of the article. In 2021, this is cool. These lakes have huge problems. And that's what we're about to get into. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it. In a matter of like like three years, they had to remove 30,000 pounds of carb. Dude. Whew. Yeah, exactly. And don't forget that it gets into, or that we're talking about like a day of fishing in the winter. They do this shit in the spring too. Mm. So here we go. In the winter, from the Spring Lake part of this, because they're two lakes that are like attached, basically, right? So we got Spring Lake, or that are super close. They have the same problem. So we got Spring Lake. In the winter of 2021, 3.75 tons of carp were removed from that lake. Tons. Winter for Upper Prior Lake Lake that year was 2.5 tons. So yeah, you do the math, right? Because it two th- two pounds, so fifteen thousand pounds. What were we saying though? Fifteen. Fifteen thousand pounds divided by two basically is seven yeah, point seven five half, tons. Seven and a half tons. Yeah. Okay. At first so, I was like, what? And then I, then I had to think. I go, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's like seven we're, and a half tons. So, okay. but you have to think about it. They've been doing this year after year because this is twenty twenty one. Yeah. They've been doing this for years. <laughs> Like that's nuts, dude. It's so crazy because they also have so they did, yeah. And this is 2021. I'm pretty sure we talked about this in 22. Now, here we are talking about in 23 again. Yeah, it's going up the amount of fish that they're removing, it seems. Because then out of upper prior lake, they got the two and a half tons, and then in the spring, they do, yeah, electro fishing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know I've never heard of this before. No, no. That's that's what they've done in the rivers and stuff for like the Asian carp. Is it? Yeah, because they were trying to like. I don't know how it works, like a hundred percent. But I know that that's like there's certain streams and rivers like where it gets a little bit small. I've actually seen them where Mm -hmm. it's like a. It looks like a little. I don't know, like a lock and dam thing. But it's got like signs where it's just like, yeah, this is like a zap the fish spot or whatever. You know, it doesn't say <laughs> that. I don't, know what the, I, don't, I don't know what that is. It just shows an electrocuted fish in one of yeah. those triangle things. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. That's so crazy, dude. Yeah, dude. It's, it's, I don't know how it works, or but I know that it's like an electric deal i think it stops them from coming that way or something but or maybe they're even talking about like the electric um like how they count for uh uh, what's the word when they're checking like the numbers for the lake oh yeah i can't think of what that is but that's that's electric thing too yeah because it knocks them out quick or brief for it stuns them yeah, and it's it's they they have that in the in the DNR booklet too. You can see oh, how really? um 
maybe I don't know if it's in the book or if it's on the website. Okay. But it'll show like it'll show like the gill net count. Okay. On some oh, of them where they where you. they know the numbers of the fish. Mm-hmm. And then it'll show like mm-hmm. that uh, you know, whatever it says. Electro dude or whatever. Yeah. You know, electro I'm going Pokemon there, but it's like electro fish number and you, and then I've always seen it and I'm just like, Oh yeah, like uh, fish electricity or whatever they do. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about right. this and that's as far as it's went. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, they do that in the spring, too, with these fucking carp, dude. It's crazy. They're electrofishing them. It says summer box netting them, too. And they they pull out, it says four tons and almost a full, another ton, too. So four tons out of Upper Pryor in the springtime and 0.7 tons out of Spring Lake in the springtime. Like, dude, dude. So many of these fucking carp in that lake. It is crazy. Like if we want to just go try to catch a carp quick. Yeah. I think we know where to do it. Maybe they do only need to pull the net through there once. And just like with the numbers that they're talking, maybe it is right. just like we just do one scoop, take our <laughs> And we divvy tons. this shit out to the, you know, <laughs> seven dudes that came here with licenses and <laughs> there they go they each have a ton like yep. holy fuck dude it's crazy we just take like a giant truck worth of fish in our one net scoop and then you know we try again in the spring <laughs> it's <laughs> we zap them again in the spring just super easy fishing we scoop a net we take seven tons then <laughs> when spring comes around we scoop a net Take seven tons. I'm just like, <laughs> Jesus, are you kidding me? That's so crazy to think about. Like, just every time they nuts, do it. Dude. Oh, that's so many. It's just I nuts. F- I feel like, have you ever seen, there's a spot in, it's not the Mall of America. It's a different mall that has like this, it's like an underwater world thing, and I can't remember what it was called, okay. but we went there for my son's birthday. Mm-hmm. And they have these koi. And these mm-hmm. koi, they have like, you know when you go to like a petting zoo, and mm-hmm. they have those like candy machines where you put a yeah. quarter in, you turn, and it has to feed? They yeah. have that for the koi. And the koi oh. know that people come and feed them. And the yeah. koi are on the surface of the water, shoulder to shoulder, all just going, oh, yeah waiting for the food and i'm just like picturing this lake being like that oh. like when when oh. you go swimming you're just like bumping up against carp constantly <laughs> they're just <laughs> there's so many of them that you <laughs> that you're just running into them there's more carp than water yeah <laughs> just <laughs> yeah you just you're just laying Gross. on it and they're just like oh is this like one of those like salt lakes where you can float, and they're just like, no, I'm riding on carps. <laughs> <laughs> Take me away. <laughs> oh, All right, dude. Let's let's get into housekeeping. Let's let's wrap up the the fishing news here and let's get into housekeeping real quick. So got the shore fishing from Pike update on the short. God dang okay. it. In a while, I know it was the third podcast now that I've updated on it, but I got good news. I'm literally in the editing stage now. I got everything right. in. Got it on the. I got everything in the project now. I got the time laid out. Edits damn near there. Got everything recorded. Oh, it's close. Oh, it's close. Oof. I'd be finishing Oof. it up this weekend if I didn't have to ed- edit the podcast. That's how close it is. Oh, nice. Had to do some of. Had to do some camera stuff so there's some that was kind of holding it up anyways so hey follow us on youtube look for it on instagram i think i can post it to twitter i'm not fucking sure how that works but uh i think i know we can post it to Mm. facebook facebook has stories now you can i don't know a lot about twitter but i've seen like video clips and stuff on there yeah i know you can put video on twitter i'm just not sure if this like 16 by 9 vertical format that i got it in oh. like the true short format i don't know if that'll go on twitter I see, either way I see. look us up on social media real aftv remember real like fish and real two e's in the middle there 
you're going to see that go up soon. Uh, trying to make it, you know, decent quality, not just some shit of talking into the camera for 60 seconds and then setting down our phones. That's not what this is. Um, thanks again. Keep sharing the YouTube. Sorry about the split not being there, but hey, we tried that experimental uh, episode last week, uh, or I should yeah. say last episode. Um, I think it went well. Little yeah. sort of little audio sync problem, but if you listen to it without knowing that, you won't know it. So I uh, fucking pulled back the curtain, blew it. <laughs> it. I think it sounded good. I think it looked good. Uh, it might happen again in the future. Give us feedback, please, uh, by just leaving YouTube comments or hit us up. DM on social media. We're there. Oh, yeah. We are in it. To um, win it. We'll do a break in the middle of the two topics brought to you by patreon.com slash TV. That's right. We have a Patreon page. Get it over there. Remember, we are back to our regular format now where we are going with the full big two hour or so podcast dropping on Monday. That's every other Monday. And then in the off week, we take the topics, we split them apart. We go fishing topic on Wednesday. We go random take on Friday. That Split can only be found over on YouTube. Share with a friend, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Do the review thing. That'll really help us out. Give us the subscribe, too. That helps huge. Please. Yep. Now. Thank, yes. Now. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Go do it now. Do it right now. 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 Do it right now. <laughs> go over. You're on your phone already listening to this. Just open the YouTube app. Go to Real AF TV. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's all we're asking. Yes. Like Josh said, please. We're polite. But please do yep. it now. Yep. Because <laughs> if, if you don't, we're going to take that carp that has the chip and he's going to swim by you. And then we're going to know right where you're at and we're going to fucking net your ass. <laughs> 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 Okay, we are going to... Okay, so here it is. Fishing topic. This one's been coming on for a while. In the random take, we're going to talk about N64 because this is episode 64. I couldn't stop it. <laughs> I had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, fishing topic. I've been wanting to do this one since we started the Real AF TV podcast, and that is no joke, no exaggeration. This is fish nervous system do they feel pain that sort of situation mm. so mm. gonna get all sciencey and shit but hang in there yeah all right i'm ready hang in there hey first off yeah before we start this no nope. i'm gonna have myself a little drink i don't know if you're gonna have a drink too i'm all out but well i i just also like okay. i want to take a shot yeah and i have yeah. a vikings shot glass right here Dude. And the whole reason I'm taking this shot that thing is, sick. Chrome is because I want to drink. But I'm also going to use the excuse that I'm saying farewell to Adam Thielen. It's been a good ride. He got cut today. He did? Yeah. Oh, so shit. Adam Thielen, hometown boy, is going to be going someplace else. Yeah, I don't know. going to pick him up. But it's been fun, and I am... Definitely just using this as an excuse to <laughs> not look like an alcoholic on the podcast. Salute. <laughs> Skull. That's what I, I should have said. Skull. And I'm also drinking some orange soda. That's what this is. If anybody's wondering. I was wondering. Okay. I like orange soda. <laughs> Kale likes orange soda. That's a Nickelodeon. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're a Nickelodeon kid, you get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All the Nickelodeon kids out there, leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> leave fire emojis in the chat. Give me some Kel emojis in the chat. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, she's a Kale. The fire. Okay, Tim. Dude, I, I'm really interested in hearing what you got to say about this topic. Yeah. Me too. Because I mean, I'm ex I'm I'm curious at this exchange, but yeah, why? Sorry, I cut you off. Dude, just the whole thing. Like I've always I don't know if they can feel pain. That's mm -hmm. one thing that everybody's been taught. Like they yeah. just uh, I don't think they can personally. I don't mm -hmm. 
just based off of their demeanor and stuff, it surely doesn't seem like they can feel pain. I've had a couple of occurrences with like muskies and bigger fish Mm -hmm. where they didn't seem to try to swim away because there was any form of pain. They swam away because they came to the realization that they were getting caught. But maybe they do feel the pain, but they just have to ignore it because they also have to eat fish that have spines. (laughs) So part of their life is like, yeah, pain is life. I don't know. (laughs) That's a really good point. And uh, yeah, I (laughs) know. The COVID kicking in. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. And I don't have COVID over here. I just have whatever oh. I have. I tested the other day for fun because I have, I don't know. Because you got tests though. Yep. I got all those tests. I'm just like, well, no, let's I see didn't, whatever this is. It's just hanging in there a little bit. It gets me every once in a while. Just hang. It's. I didn't get, I didn't get a bad cough. Anyways, anyways, we're getting, uh, okay, Sorry. here we go. Sorry. So. Dimitri Martin, I was watching some of his specials before we canceled our uh, Paramount Plus subscription. Yeah. So I was yeah. watching some of his old stuff. And he is so funny. He does those little jokes. Like he's doing musical number, right? And then he has like a little <sighs> joke. And then he does a musical number. And then he has a little joke. And I just love those rapid fire little jokes. And he has one that's <laughs> so good. He's just like, fishing. They should just call it what it is. Tricking and killing. <laughs> Tricking and killing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. <It's> just, yeah. <laughs> and and it was just one of my, it, like, it just made me think more about this topic because, again, it's been one that I've always wanted to do because it's one that people I hear more often than I used to hearing. Right. And it's just like, yeah, well, I don't know. I like fishing's cool and everything, but I hate the fact you just like hook them in the face and throw them back. I'm like, well, not, not everybody does that, first of all. Right. So, whatever it's you know yeah. that's not the only way you fish right if, and if i've heard small, that too where they're just to. where they're just like you don't go hunting and then like release the animal and it's like well you don't mortally wound the fish either right you know we're not shooting exactly. this thing in the face mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one thing i will say but also is, you can't see what you're fishing for either that's part of fishing like you don't know what right. you're gonna catch when you catch a sunny on a two and a half inch swim bait Yes, because it just runs up on it. Right, right. Yeah. Like, how the fuck you? What are you gonna do with that? You don't yeah. want that sunny. You're not gonna eat that sunny. It's small. It's aggressive. You caught it. It's not edible. Right. You're gonna throw it back. Like, oh fuck, I can't yeah. control that. So, I'm I'm not trying to make this into that debate or that discussion, but this has to be part of it. Like, we're not gonna just dive in and do this because we're gonna right, get into right, right. like the science yeah. here. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah the, what else were you going to say? Because- I was just going to say like the the whole like killing part. Mm-hmm. I didn't think about it when I was younger for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But now for sure I do. When I go to clean the fish, mm-hmm. I definitely wrap them over the head every time right. before I clean them. Yeah. I used to just like clean the fish like they don't feel anything and they have like and it's just like I don't know for sure if they do. Yeah. And if they do, I'm just cutting the meat off of their flesh, like their right. skin uh-huh. and bone while they're still alive. Like mm-hmm. that got to me in later years. Yeah. So now me I too. definitely just like take them out before I fillet them. Yeah. And and a lot of times I actually like bleed them in the basket and stuff now. Oh, just, you do like, do that. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Because that's something I just learned about in the last few years of since we started doing the podcast that I wanted to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, do it. Do yeah. it to some of the fish. When you cut that main artery yeah. and they swim in there and they're able to bleed out and stuff, you can see a visible difference in the fillet. You because yeah, when you cut you the fillet, like they, it has those little like black lines, and those mm-hmm. are veins that still have blood in it. Oh, when they bleed out, like all that leaves, and you just have this pure white fillet. It's just like super white and clean. Yeah. It's yeah, it's dude, super white and next clean. Next time we catch fish together, the, we're doing it. Yeah, that. it's super white and clean. The nice. mess when you're cleaning them is mm-hmm. less because they're not bleeding as you're cleaning them. Yeah. They're already dead. The heart's not pumping anymore. Right, right. There's there's like no blood left in them. And yeah. they're not feeling any of this because they died. Yes. Like bleeding them out like that because I don't. I've never believed that they they've felt pain. So that's why I'm curious to see like how like what this is all going to say. Yeah. Because when sure. you bleed them out like that, 
You just give them a quick snip, and I they can't. Yep. They don't know what's going on. They're just yeah, like no, back it's in just the like water. slitting the throat of a pig or a cow or something. You know, like a maybe not a cow. It takes a long time yeah. for a cow to bleed out. But and, a, but except a, a, like pigs and and cows and stuff, they're like they're more intelligent. Than oh a yeah, fish. no, no, I fully. I don't agree. think the fish knows what's going on. It's just right. like when it, it just gets all hooked. of a sudden starts to run out of blood. <laughs> right, exactly. It's just kind of swimming there, and then it just kind of stops. <laughs> right. And that's all yeah. there is. To yeah, it. and like, with that, with that part of it, I, I don't, I don't know for sure when it comes to that. But I, I agree with you. I, I, I'm, I'm on the same page as you. Because even, yeah, even though a small a, a pig will bleed out fast, like it still has time to realize its neck has been opened up. Like, right. And I it don't think the fish and freaks out, and the fish right. doesn't know what's going on. Right. I think the fish just is swimming, and then all of a sudden. It just is not breathing anymore. Yeah, like I, I just used the, exa- the example of like the reaction after the fact. Right. Mammals, like those ones that we eat, are they like freak out. Right. And a fish, you do it, you put it back in the basket, and it like swims down to the bottom, and it doesn't really do anything. Yeah. And I suppose you could use the argument of just like, well, what's it going to do? It can't swim away. Well, if I put it in the regular water, it'd still do the same thing. Yeah. It would swim down into the weeds and then just sit there. Right. It and wouldn't we, it wouldn't start going like you know like, <laughs> it's not freaking out. It just kind of just goes Right, right, right. All right, am I good? And then I don't think it even thinks that. It just kind of goes you know, whatever it does. Yep. And then it is no more. And then it's just foof gone. Yeah. So let's let's jump into it then. So I got most of my uh most of what I have here to start us off with the the science of it, the biology stuff as I have in the notes. Um, from the University of Hawaii. Okay. Um, I read a big, big article, well written to be comprehensible by someone who's not a scientist. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, like it wasn't just a bunch of biology, biology language. It was very, it was um, pretty easy to read. And yeah, this is pretty much where we're going to get most of this from. Um, and before we jump in, we were talking about fin fish. I realized that is a thing. Like, we're talking about fin fish. We're talking about fish that swim as opposed to like shellfish. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're, you know, yeah. when you think of a I'm, fish, it's a fin fish. But dude, yeah, exactly. When you said that, I'm like, what up. fish don't have fins? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. The, yeah, the yeah, shellfish. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, I wanted to just be very clear about that. I was like, think of a fish. Okay. That's what we're talking about gills tail shit like that but okay. you know like shellfish didn't get into that mussels you know if you want to consider that a fish like a, an oyster or something like that right like we're not talking about that stuff we're not right, talking right, about right, those, right, right. yeah we're talking about real deal fish so just wanted to put that out there before uh before we got into it uh, because that's not a vein in the back of that shellfish shrimp there that you're eating that's poop <laughs> That is poop. <laughs> it is shrimp poop. Yeah. That is not Which, a big main vein spine thingy right. with all these nerve endings. It's just shit. Yep. <laughs> but their their poop is really more of like filtered out like sand and gravel. Yeah. You can so that's it. what that is. But I still do not. Ever since I learned that, like I won't go to most places that have the like, all you can eat shrimp. And I'm like, yeah, because that's the cheap non devein stuff. I'm not here to get all I can eat shrimp shit. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just keep it coming. Isn't that amazing? Not really. No, they just no. cooked it with the poop in it. Yeah, they kicked it with Ew. the poop in it. Yeah. But those are got to that's those are so different too because most of those have the exoskeleton. Right. So I think yep. that's got to be like an internal skeleton. That's got to be like right, too. that's got to be like a completely different nervous system yeah you would nope, think. i think so yep yeah. because that again there's no internal like fin fish have the internal skeleton yeah mm-hmm. right right yep yeah okay so i'll tell you this the nervous system is a complex group of tissues and organs that control most body processes <laughs> that's a quote i just wanted to be very clear of like we are talking about the nervous system here going forward we are you know like we're talking about the nervous system of it we will get into pain but like your nervous system is how you feel, right? Like how you right. actually feel the physical world is is how I'll put that that quote. 
Sure. And sure. so that's what we're kind of talking about, or that's kind of the point as we already kind of opened up with. Okay. So there's two parts to your nervous system, your central, your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. I'm learning okay. stuff here. Right, right. Central. And this is fish too. I guess I say your, <laughs> we're talking about fish. So the central nervous system is just the brain and the spine. Okay. Fish have a spine. Can you tell me more that you've handled more fish than I have? Spine. Yeah. Is that is that literally run across the back of it? Like, do you say if I, you're filleting a fish, do you say like run it against the spine? Yeah. Or is it more embedded inside? Like, I don't know. Do you know? No, it has. It, it's a spine. It, it it depends on the fish. The placement's okay. a little bit off. Okay. Like the the northerns have that Y bone and stuff, but that All right. there's okay. there's a big like almost like a back strap. There's a big piece of meat that's like above the spine. Oh. So okay. there's the spine doesn't go all the way to the surface where the other fish right. pretty much do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's what but, the northern you're talking about that has that back strap on it pretty much? Yeah, that nor the northern is a little bit different setup. That's why it has that Y bone where there's like the spine and then there's like bones that come off each side that make that Y shape. Interesting. But and so the it's middle is a little bit more embedded in its yeah, body. Yeah, the middle is a little bit further down. And I'm trying to think. The spine goes all the way to the top. I always cut the fillets off the sides. I've never tried to go down. But yeah, the spine, I'm pretty sure it goes right up to the top. And then I've never looked at the anatomy of like what's underneath the skin because I can't see it that well. But the dorsal fin, mm -hmm. they call those like spines, the spikes. Yeah. And you would think that that's almost got to be like a jointed version of the spine, like just a continuation that can like move up and down. Because it has like muscles on that. They can like lift it up and down. Can. So I think that's almost like a continuation. But yeah, like bass and stuff and sunfish and all them. I'm I'm most pretty certain that the pretty spine goes that, right to the top there. Yeah, but I like haven't, that backbone is a bone, is like their spine is their bone. It yeah, yeah, but it goes is. all yeah. yeah, it goes all the way to the top. I'm I'm pretty certain. Yeah. I but mean I, I believe you I just could, haven't handled enough fish. Yeah. I sure, could maybe it's wrong. embedded there's, under there, but like there's there's something hard on top of it. Yeah. Then like at least it's a piece of cartilage that is Yeah, maybe there's a piece of cartilage and technically like, it's it's there. Yeah, maybe it's that there's backbone a... of the fish is the spine essentially. Yeah, I would think so, unless yeah, I agree. possibly the spine I actually agree. runs like through the middle, like all the way through the middle. Uh, no, and then the other bone structure goes up. I don't know. No, it I didn't look never, to be that way. We'll get it. I've never we'll really thought. Like yeah, I, I like cut around the rib cage to cut the yep. meat off and stuff. Yep. I guess I've never really thought about like. Is this the spine or not? No, it's definitely it's a in weird. The back. It's a weird thing, you know. It's it's such a weird deal to have stuff like that, where you've been it doing is. something your whole life, and then somebody goes, and then you go, "Oh yeah, yeah I could tell you about that," and you go, "Can I?" Wait, I don't know. Right? Yeah, no, that's know. exactly <laughs> why. Also, I wanted wanted to do this because I had the same realization as I got older too. I felt bad about like I remember seeing fish still moving their gills and shit, and they've been completely. Oh fluid. yeah. And thrown in the yeah. gut bucket already, and they're still moving their gills. And I was like, "Oh God!" I just felt so fucking bad Dude, about that. Yeah. And but so, the nervous system keeps going. Yeah. There are videos on still the. Alive. I mean, there are videos in, in on some the cases, internet. They're still alive. There are videos on the internet of fish that are completely filleted, and yep. all you have is the fillet, and the muscle is there. Yep. There is the the muscle has literally been removed from the fish. Yep. And that muscle alone is flopping around still. Yeah. It is Wait. gnarly looking where you're yeah. just like, oh my God, I've That's never had that happen before. No, no, I've never seen that before other than on the internet, but it happens. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Back to it. So the peripheral nervous system. Uh, that's the nerves themselves, which what you're talking about, you know, like what keeps the yep. muscle moving, yep. of course, yep. it's just getting, you know, leftover energy out. Sure. So it's the nerves and the organs, which I was oh. like, organs. We'll get into the organs. There's so there's two kinds of nerves. There's sensory sensory ones, so connect to sensory stuff, noses and shit, right? And then yeah. there's motor ones that just run muscles and glands and things like that. So those are the things that move the fish, right? Yep. So you got you got your two parts of your nervous system. So 
so far pretty complicated. Yeah. Fish aren't that complicated. <laughs> no. Nah. Though their brain does have six major parts. Again, more than I expected. Yeah. There's, and this is six major parts. So I'll just read them quick. You got the olfactory, the cerebrum, optic, pituitary glands. Okay. The cerebellum and the yep. medulla. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I just named off uh, six parts. Now we'll get into them. Yep. I didn't expect that. Six parts to a fish brain. It's pretty big. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I would have expected it either, but I don't know. Is that how most brains are made up? Like, does it matter? Like, even if you right. have all those parts, does that change anything with the intelligence level? Or is that just how brains are? Uh, yeah, but more... Are there I like think more parts there, to the brain? The more complicated, the more that it's considered that you can. But I mean, like, are there, there are there like far less part? Are there a bunch of animals with far less parts to their brain? Uh, or is that just how I, brains are I made up that way? <laughs> I only That's why I'm wondering. Like, even the brain. dumbest animals in the world, right? They just have like a you. full brain, and it just doesn't work good. <laughs> good, good <laughs> question. But also, here's the thing: a part of the brain. The two olfactory bulbs. Okay. Dude, that's your nose. That's your sniffer. Humans have olfactory. Like, you, if you remember biology at all, yeah. olfactory is just a term for your sniffers. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm, all these terms are like ringing bells. Right. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and act just be like, oh, yes, I knew exactly what that was. <laughs> right. But like, right, right, as soon as you say olfactory, I'm like, oh, yes, I've, yeah. these are right. familiar things in my brain. Right. So think of how important scent is. Like, that just sets off right there. Right. How important right. scent is to a fish. Yeah. Literally, part of its brain is dedicated to smell. Right. Right. It's not doing anything else. So when you say six parts, right? And part of it's your fucking nose, you know? Right. <laughs> we have a nose that sniffs it up, goes into our brain, then it processes. Like, nope, this is just like straight to the dome, man. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> Don't give a fish cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Damn, you want to see a swim fast? <laughs> <laughs> just jumping over docks <laughs> just because yeah. instantly kicks in, just bam. <laughs> no, imagine fighting that fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cocaine bear. Now we got a new movie, dude. Cocaine fish. <laughs> cocaine fish. Yeah. The sequel. Nice. The sequel. Okay. Ooh, that could be. I was thinking, I was honestly thinking like the sequel would be like Meth Bear. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like eight it's hours real long. And shit. <laughs> he's like, he's like, like, he he's not constantly looking for a re up like the cocaine bear is. Right, right. So he's got like that eight hours of rage, but he's, <laughs> but he's wiry, dude. He is. <laughs> he's not that big buff bear. He just he's scrawny, but he can go. Catch you, fur. <laughs> you catch him just cleaning out his den. Oh, no he, just get, he just gets. He just gets sidetracked dirt all the time. You're like, yeah. <laughs> that dirt's that dirt's your floor, and he's nah, nah. Right. Nah. Trust me, making it clean. <laughs> Pushing his dirt out, and you're just like, you clean your den right now, and he's like, you fucking cop. <laughs> just, just getting up in everybody's business. Just leave me alone, man. Just do my thing right now. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So the, the olfactory. I don't. I don't want to spend too much more time on it because you know I don't want to drag this podcast this this part of the podcast on super long. Sure. But it just smell uh, like a boat, you know, bait smell, whatever, however you want to put it, right? Like knowing that this is such a big part of their brain now, I'm just like, oh, man, scented baits, dude. Scented yeah, dude. baits. For sure. Do you see a big difference when you use a scented? Like, because you, you fish more than me, obviously. So that's what, like, do you see a big difference with the scented baits? You have a lot of them. 
Yes, I do see a big difference with the Senate bait. It's like, depending on what they are, I've had, I've seemed to have different uh, luck too with different scents. Certain scents nice. seem to work better than others. Yeah, yeah. Almost like they're so, tuned in, right? Like they have these big yeah. old glands that just like tune in to their space around them or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think I think it does help. I think I think it it makes them question it less. It's almost <laughs> like you, they they smell it a little bit, yeah, and then yeah. they see it, and then it's like just kind of that, you know. Again, don't know how smart they are, but it's like that if they're putting two and two together, that right. looks like a fish that I could eat, smells like a fish that I could eat, right. I'm hitting that thing. It's like their instinct and, just kicks in. They're like, I can't help myself, and they go for it. Right. And mm-hmm. because of that thinking, too, a lot of fishing is confidence-based. Yeah. Like, if you don't have confidence in a bait, it's a little bit harder to to fish with and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, it's a big point for the fishermen to have confidence. Yeah. And I definitely have more confidence in a bait that has smell. Sure. sure. And uh, people have had a, a lot of luck on the max scent the okay. the power bait max scent yeah which is like 33 percent stronger it says right on the bag 33 percent stronger <laughs> than all the other stuff out there so it's like if if you have good luck on the one that has the most stink maybe there's something to that i don't know sure. I, and sure. because it it works with their their scent like their taste too that scent and taste okay. is yeah. in together. Right. And yeah. power bait, you know, it's going off of their claim. I don't, I can't tell you for sure. I can just say what they've said. Right. Is that they claim that the fish will hold on to the bait longer too. Mm. Like when they eat it, they won't mm-hmm. spit it right away because they're not just like, this is plastic. Got they it. They eat it and they're just like, mm, still kind They'll of. hold on to it for a second. You know, sure. this is food, I think. Yep. They actually so, have to have signs to back that up because they can't market it if it's not, like it's technically false advertising. Like it should be. It's, right, it's illegal right. for them to say that. So yeah. they've done their own research for sure. Um, right. Well, I'm, that's I'm that's what I mean. Like there's, there's that haven't been in marketing long enough. Yeah. And it's like there's loopholes on everything too, right? <laughs> so you have to have this <laughs> research. You have to have this research and stuff. But it's like, what are you putting it up against? You know? Yeah. I got you. It's a, they they hold on to the power bait thirty three percent longer than that pop can we tied to a string. <laughs> they didn't they didn't, they sucked right, that in right. for a second and spit it right back out. They spit were like, right no, out. thank you. <laughs> they I don't, don't, want, I don't this. want it. Why the hell did I eat this tin? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move into the second part of the fish brain, the cerebrum. There's two mm. lobes. Behind the olfactory bulb. So the olfactory kind of runs from like the nostrils up towards the head, you know, from the, because most fin fish are kind of shaped the same in a way, right? So you got, you yeah. got your, yeah, from you the got your part. nostrils right in the front that if you've ever had a fish, caught a fish, you can see them. And those yep. olfactories, they kind of go up that slope in their face. Yeah. And then just behind that, there's these two lobes. Um, they're kind of like above the eyes a little bit, above kind of behind the eyes. So like you're starting to get into the noggin part of it now. And okay. this is voluntary muscle movement and memory. And then this is where we get into like fish don't have shit for memories. Now they can mm. do, it says simple tasks and environmental adaptations are yeah. pretty much the only thing that a fish can actually like learn or remember Sure. I, they didn't say like what a simple task is, but you can make the assumption that it's like if I pick up these rocks and spit them out over there, I moved them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then they well, can build a bed. Even though some of that is, you know, natural instinct, there's right. There's a certain yeah. like okay, it, it figured it out. Good good for it. Yeah. Um, but there's got to be a, there's got to be a little bit of stuff they're like that because they will find like a decent spawning area and right. they'll be like, this is kind of protected from wind, you know, and I, they don't know wind. They're like, this is, per- there's not much current going on here. This seems like a good spot. Right. I'll mm-hmm. fan me a bed, wait for a lady. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, do their thing. And then they do it at like the same time of year. So there's like that too. 
mm-hmm. where they're just like the water's warming up a little bit and they're just mm-hmm. like, all right. Right. Looks like it's about that time. Some of these yep. ladies are going to get a little bit freaky <laughs> when you're running, you know, like, so there's, there's definitely, they definitely have that habit where they know what they're doing. And, and like how you were saying, like picking up rocks and stuff, sometimes mm-hmm. they'll pick up a bait just to get it out of the way. Oh, sure. Yeah. Like, like you'll have like a imitation crayfish and they'll come over and they'll just be like, you're not supposed to be here. And they'll scoop it up, swim away, spit it out like away from the nest. So it knows like, it, yep. here's how I get rid of you. Right. And then it yep. goes back to the nest. And you're not supposed to be here. This is my environmental adaptation. Yeah, for yep, sure. Yep. Yep. And the voluntary muscle movement. Like, okay, yeah, this is how it, you know, can actually tell itself to swim. That's how it wags sure. its tail. Okay. Cool. Sure. So that's what the cerebrum does. Okay. And then we got two optic lobes. So again, the eyeballs are like directly wired into the brain here. They are like the lobes are part of the brain. They're considered a part of the fish brain. So there's two of those. They're just behind the cerebrum. And, you know, so like these are just below. I mean, they're, t- they're just below behind the eyes basically. Right. So, the top okay. middle of the head sure. is kind of yep. what I did. But okay. Yeah. It's their eyeballs. Their eyeball nerves. It's not it's not like a separate system. Okay. It is part of their brain. So again, like the like the olfactories, right? How big is sight on fish? Huge. Oh yeah. Just like shiny baits. That's right yep. away, you know, anything that's shiny. Yep. Making it yep. look natural, like crayfish yeah. baits. Like you were just saying crayfish. You could see a crayfish. Yep. It was a difference. Sight, big. Sure. The pituitary gland, again, a gland that is considered part of the brain. I don't really understand glands. Glands are fucking crazy because they're everywhere in the human body. Right. And they're everywhere in a pig body too. You know that? Like a wild boar has like nine glands you have to work from like behind its neck all the way to its back legs basically anyways i'm getting off topic <laughs> no i didn't i don't know shit about pigs they reek they reek and, and they're you have delicious to cut them out. but they are delicious they okay are delicious. so you got your pituitary gland beneath the optic lobes and this is your chemical command center that's so this is basically where all of the fish's chemicals come from so this is kind of like okay. the kick it in Okay. And that's, uh, yeah, that's just one, beneath the optic lobes. They're kind of like more, hidden in the face almost a little bit. One more thing I got to say real quick, because yeah. you're talking about the sight, where it's like sight is very important for them. Oh, yeah. But I don't think they can put together what they're looking at. Because if they could, mm-hmm. they would never bite on something with all the hooks and stuff. The umbrella rig or the yep. A rig, the Alabama right. rig, yep. perfect example. Right, because that's a bunch of swim baits on just literally what looks like a like an umbrella without the fabric. Yeah, it does, <laughs> and they still eat that shit, man. Yeah, and they still eat that shit. So their sight is important, but their brain can't put together what the hell they're looking at. They're just like, yes, why are well, all these other fish chasing this metal yeah. sculpture? I don't think yeah. th- I they can't put it together. So, anyways. Yeah. No, no, that's perfect. That's exactly the kind of conversation that I wanted to have because of this. You're you're dead on. That's a really good point. I know we kind of skipped over it pretty quick, but yeah, it's important to fish. It, yeah. They rely on it because they it's they use it. Obviously, if that's a big part of your brain, it's going to take up a lot of space in your thinking. But yeah. it doesn't mean that they're seeing super crystal clear and comprehending everything they're seeing. Right. You're right. Like yeah. that's shiny. I'm going to fucking take it down, but it can see that shiny thing from far away. It picks up on it easily. Like it can distinguish something shiny from its environment. Right. Yes. Like from its surroundings. Right. Like it, yep. it's, it's, it's that sort of importance and it takes up a, if it's part of your right. brain then it's going to take up a bunch of your thought. I mean, that's it. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, pituitary gland, we talked about it. That's the chemical command center. So that's kind of, you know, what kind of fires everything off. And uh, the cerebellum. So cerebellum. This is, yeah, cerebellum, and in most in mammals and stuff, like it's, it's a pretty big, it's a pretty big part. So let's right. get into fish parts. 
behind the optic lobes. It's kind of the top back of the head, um, like just in front of the gills. It's kind of like where I think the head ends in a way. Does that make okay. sense? Like, does that make mm. sense? I don't know. What can you say it again? It's where? So, so I have, I, 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 what I wrote down is it's kind of in the back, in the top back, like just in front of the gills, you know, kind of where the gills oh, start. Yeah. Okay. It's like go in a little bit from the gills on most fish. I know some like barracudas yeah. have fucking super long heads. So, okay, take it for what it is. But like, right, yeah. think about like, like a sunfish or a bass thing. or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, so that's kind of just in there. Um, the reason why I bring that up is because, uh, this is where coordination of skeletal muscles happens. So I'm kind of like, what the fuck does that mean? And then I thought about it a little more as you were talking about like the ribs and stuff like that and the way you're cutting into it. And I was like, yeah. Oh, so this must be that shit that's connected directly to the bone. Like you said, the back strap, right on yeah. the walleye. So that must be what this thing's taking the pipe. care of. Like, the pipe. the pipe. Thank you. Thank yep. you for correcting me. Yeah. So I think that must be what this thing's doing. Is it taking care of that, like, those those muscles that are just, like, they just connected directly to the skeleton and must help movement more then. Sure. Yeah. Um, But uh, the, the reason why I say that also is because, like you said, that backstrap thing. And it yeah. says... Once it starts swimming, um, this is what keeps all the muscles in order. Because, you know, when a fish swims, it's like, it's not a snake, but you know what I mean? Like it has yeah. a pattern to it. Yep. And so the rhythm of that pattern is kept in order by the cerebellum. Okay. Which is pretty fucking wild, I thought. Right. All I could think is like, that's not as catchy of a song. But I feel like it'd be something that you would hear on like uh uh like the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. And just like the nerds sitting around and say, This is the rhythm of the cerebellum. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that was the, those were the original lyrics. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> 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 okay so yeah the cerebellum is keep keeps them swimming and then you got the medulla which is kind of just sits right underneath a little bit more inside the head of the cerebellum um and it connects the brain directly to the spinal cord and that's why when you were talking about the the spinal cord connecting and stuff like that think about the back going up right and then the way if you think about where i just kind of explained that and it's high up in the head near the back it's mm -hmm. kind of like the spinal cords running straight down the back right I'm thinking. right it's like right there yeah, yeah. that makes sense because if part this is the like part that's connecting right there it. yep yeah and that i think sense. so between the medulla and the cerebellum i think this is why when you fucking knock them in the head they're done because you're getting that coordination, you're just knocking all their coordination out, right? Because the medulla, yeah. since it connects directly to the spinal cord, this is what keeps them alive. Oh. You know, this is the thing that is the yeah. hearts, the gills, everything like that. It keeps all that stuff running and sends all the nerve, you know, it sends all the signal. Yeah. Or it, it's the last thing before all the signals go out. Right. And so, yeah, this is the thing that just like runs everything. So that's why, you know, you take them and you fucking bonk them in the head right there dude and it's weird like a, a pike is one where like you can see that you connected because yeah. i've seen it's weird like the eyes are kind of set norm you know they're like on each side of the head uh -huh. and when you hit them in the right spot the eyes literally kind of go J -j 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 -j, and then they kind of like droop down a little bit oh you can see them literally go like, see, like the shift. Do, 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 do. They twitch and then shut off. Almost yeah, like, like you the, just, yeah, you you just you just cut the head off a robot. Yeah, dude, exactly. It's Pretty like cartoon. it's like you hit the spot and it and they just go. Eh, er, yeah, exactly like a robot. That's all. 
as my picture. The first time I did it, I was like, oh, dude, I like watched it die. But then That's I'm like, crazy. oh, but I've like killed them so many times without doing that first. Right. It's got to be better, right? Like it's it, now that's what I look for. Now yeah. I'm just like, oh, I watched like him shut off. off. <laughs> yeah. I watched him <laughs> shut off. We're good. I watched Go for it, it shut off. <laughs> it's good now. <laughs> and I agree. I actually, the first time in my adulthood that I took it on myself, um, I, I knocked him out. Yep. Because I yeah. had the, like, I'd seen it so many times where they were just like friends or, uh, even doing it as a kid, they would just start scaling them and, you know, and cut them out. And I saw the breathing too much. And I was like, I know that you can hit him in the head and knock him out. And so, yeah, we caught a couple Sundays one time. It was all on me. I was the, the head of the fishing group right? Um, and I knocked him out and I, and, and then filleted him and it's not knocking him out. It takes him out. They did like you smash oh, yeah. the brain, I think is what happens. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think it's either smash the brain and like you were saying, like where that nerve is, like you're just, you're oh. like hitting that nerve. Right. And it's literally just like an off switch. Yeah. You're right. Good point. Cause that's what yeah. it's like in the UFC too. The, like your chin has a direct oh, yeah. connection to the back of your brain. Right. That's why right. when you hit it, you hit that button, just boop. And then yep. you that's go what to they sleep. call it. Even yep. in fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Good point. Yeah. That's their button. Good. Yeah. Yep. That's so even, button. even if it doesn't kill them, at least they're out for when I do my thing and you right. and then they up make after I do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're done. So mm -hmm. with, with that part of it done. Yeah. With the brain part of it done now. Yep. Do you think that, or have you not not do you think have you ever seen the knife technique not the gill not the gills to the knife i mean yeah. not the knife to the gills okay. the knife to the head like to where you just take it and you just take the knife and you go okay here's where the brain is and then bam you just Ooh. stab them right in the noggin like you 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 brain them yeah have you seen no. that before mm, -mm. i've i've seen no, it no i haven't cuz I don't carry a knife. Right. That's sturdy. Yeah. The fillet knife is, is flexible. It won't do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, not I've never tried that. yeah, I've never tried going through the skull. I don't think I've ever seen it done. Yeah. It's a thing people yeah. do. I think it might be more ocean fish, more bigger ocean fish that people do it to. But okay. I think I'm just gonna stick to the whole like Yeah. I wanna I wanna get like a good um kitchen shears. Like a yeah, like dude. A, a strong kitchen shears, and then you yeah. just go underneath and just snip. And snip the because there's a main. Your the gills are here, which you can do, but I still feel like that's almost like inhumane too. Like the gills run down, and there's like one main artery that runs like yeah. directly underneath the chin. So Through if you come chin. in here and you just go snip real quick, and you get the gills and that vein at the same that's time, because that game, that's get, that can that disconnects the main vein in their neck from the mm -hmm. gills it's like a double it's like a double whammy isn't it yep, yep. yeah just that's just, the way i was thinking of doing it well, that big I, I scissors boom hit wayne the main brain mclean and just <laughs> done boom yeah yeah I mean, I, I, yeah so yeah. I, that's i i haven't got one yet so i'm still using the the fillet knife but the fillet knife is still like it's a little bit of a of a, of a uh, I can't talk of a flex. There's, there's like, um, on like walleyes, there's like the muscles and there's almost like a little thin spot where you can almost kind of oh, see through there. And to really? me, it always reminds me of like those dragon movies where like the dragon is like, you Wait, cannot touch it unless you, you stab it in that weak spot. There's a weak yeah. spot right there. You That's hit right. him in the weak spot yep. and he's done. Right. And then you can almost like find it. You go in there and just boop. And yeah, yeah just Interesting. knife knife right well, in there. I'm going to start looking for a good set of kitchen shears now too. We have some, but we don't have like a good, I want to know what a good set looks like. If you find it, you bring it on the podcast and show us. Yeah, something, I'm super something hefty with a good, yeah, get, with a good get handle. Good leverage like good, in good, just get good, in there uh, and just snip. Yeah, that good, good pinch in the middle. Well put together yeah what, i don't know what that's called but yeah like the pivot point 
good pivot mm, point. Yes, I don't know. Pivot point sounds. I don't know what the fuck. Correct. I don't know what you. Uh, what else you would call it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's just go over the sensory organs really quick, and then we're gonna get into do they feel pain. The sensory organs are just the stuff because this is the other part of the nervous system, right? So I just want to make sure to cover it here, and it, we're just gonna go over it really quick. You got the eyes, the ears, the lateral line, taste, nostrils, right? That's yep. all the sensory organs are. That's the other part of the nervous system. It's that stuff. Sure. It's just that. Yeah. Now, the lateral line is the only one I wanted to kind of touch back on because mm. I don't really understand it. And I think you probably know a little bit more. And I just want to talk about it because we've talked about shiny things and noise and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. What is the lateral line again? Because it seems like such a big topic. The lateral line is is its sixth sense. It's yeah. it feels vibrations basically. Eyes, ears, nose. It can it taste, can it smell. can feel lateral line. Yeah, it can feel without having to touch. It, it like the vibrations in the water. It can literally feel it yeah. through its body. Ah. Uh. Uh -huh. So that's okay. why that's why like vibrating baits work so well, like right. a chatter bait or a spinner bait, mm -hmm. or those blades. When those blades vibrate fast, they can literally feel it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, not we talked about the smell, and we talked about the sight thing, but like this is the other part of the nervous system where you're literally tapping into a sense that is unique. Well, not unique, but they have a sixth sense. Yeah. Yeah. For that sure. That is that, and you're tapping into it with noisy baits. Ah. Yep. Yep. I, yep. And that vibration, I mean. that vibration is like natural to them because fish will do the same thing because that tail, when the fish oh, right. is swimming, will move. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like everything that's irregular is what turns them on. That's why like right. when a bait's going in a straight line, that's not normal for fish. When a bait is darting all erratic, that's not normal. It's yeah. it's like these these irregularities get them going. And when there's right. like a steady right. heavy thumping, just they're like what the fuck is that what the fuck is that ah! i just like i always picture small mouths like just being like super angry <laughs> and that vibration going past them and they're just like no ah! <laughs> they just gotta chomp it most of the time they get lit up just i gotta get that no ah! like <laughs> i don't know that's in uh, my mind that's just what they're like every time a so bait good. passes by it's got like this anime picture in my head of fucking <laughs> exactly. Oh, I wish I could draw anime. Just like the all that like energy behind them. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're gonna wrap up this topic on what we started with. Do they feel pain? So research. There is research out there. I did some research. So I found this on Smithsonian on the Smithsonian website. The Smithsonian. Yeah. Um, this was via Haka Magazine. H A K A I A. H A K A I. Yep. Hakai? Yep. Hakai okay. Magazine. Okay. Yep. Turns out fish feel pain. Now, mm. to what extent and all of that, I think is still an open debate and like. We already talked about their memory. They don't have that much memory. Right. So how long are they in pain, right? How, they'll never... We'll, okay, we'll get into that. But here's right. how they tested for... Here's how the, the paper that was written on it tested for pain. They would inject them with an acid solution. Okay. And so like acid, like acidic water. Yeah. They would inject it into their muscles and that fucking hurt. And... It changed their behavior. Like, we know that it hurts, right? Like, you can do this to humans, and it, and it fucking hurts. <laughs> sure, right. Um, and so it did change their behavior. They did it to their lips, and they would rub their lips into the rocks and, and do things like that to, like, indicate that their lips were feeling fucking weird. Okay. Um, they put in... They had a path to two tanks. So, like, these fish... We're in a tank. They'd put these fish in a tank and then they'd have a path to two different tanks coming off of that one. Right. Okay. And one tank was filled with foliage and all the fun stuff that a fish would want to go live in. Right. Like yeah. it was a nice fish tank. And then there was just a fucking empty tank. The control was 
they just put the fish in there normally and see which one they went to. They always went over to the tank that had stuff in it. So just sure. normal fish go into the normal tank. Yep. Then they started to put a painkiller, which they basically said was morphine, but it wasn't, it couldn't have been morphine, but like that's what they amounted it to. Yeah. They put morphine in the empty tank and then they injected them with acid and the fish figured out that the empty tank had the painkiller in it and they would go over there and chill out in the empty tank to get rid of the pain. Feel better. Mm hmm. Huh. So again, environmental changes, they're picking up on it. So they're fucked up and they figured out the environment was better over there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fucking crazy. Now, also, let me ask this question. People who practice bass fishing, right? You, yeah. You go out without hooks on some or all of the time on practice day, right? Sure. So you don't sting them, right? Isn't that what they kind of call it? Yeah, like I think they'll they'll be able to feel the the bite, but they're not catching them. So you're right. not necessarily like spooking them. Yes. Right. Yeah. I. Yep. They could call it so they don't sting them. Like that's the word, but I don't know. Okay. For sure, that I've seems to make before. sense. That seems to make sense. Sure. Because they that's another term that I've like heard where they say like a stinger hook. Is like mm. the hook that you put on the back of something to like elongate the hooks to double your chances oh. of like catching it, like if they're gotcha. short striking it. Sure, sure. So I believe you. I'll say yes. <laughs> For sure. So yeah. I mean, what do you think? That's that's the research, that's the that's the biology. The that seems crazy. Yeah. It's pretty I, wild, huh? That does seem very wild. Um, yeah, I don't... I don't not believe what they're saying, mm -hmm. but I do wonder, like, is it even pain mm -hmm. that that's what they're perceiving it as? Mm-hmm. Or, is or it do just they just discomfort, know, like yeah, or they the just know something's sort of... not right, right? Because mm -hmm. they're nope. just like I I operate on a hundred percent, and something's wrong with my lips. <laughs> so right, right. I mean, like maybe if I do this on the rocks or something, right? Yeah, yeah, dude, that seems weird. Yep. And um, I mean, we know that fish get stressed out from fighting and swimming and stuff like that, like. We know that it, like, a fish is super worked up from a fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it gets their system going. They, like, yep. a fish comes in. Like, if you're trying to eat fish and you actually had a really big fight with a fish, like ocean fish, you're trying to right. eat it, you're like, we got to cool this thing down. It's hot because it just was fighting. So you got to get the blood out of that thing, like an ocean fish yeah. specifically. You got to get the blood out fast because they warm up. And you don't want that. That's how the meat will go bad and all that stuff. So does it even know that it's been hooked in the face, right? Like it's just, it's just fighting. I think well, it's right. just doing a survival move. <clears throat> yeah. And yeah, I that's mean. The, that's the other thing that I was talking about with, like I've had bigger fish where I've caught bigger fish and they've seemingly like not even really fought until they <laughs> saw me. Like they were hooked. There's mm -hmm. a hook in their face yep. and they're not running until they realize that I'm trying to land them. And then they try to run away. Sure. And when they try to run away, they feel the resistance. Right. And that's when they're just like, that's when they go, that's when they got, they mm -hmm. just keep fighting until they get away. Cause they're trying sure. to go down into the weeds to hide because they got spooked. Yeah. And I'm stopping them from doing that. So yep. then, the fight Instinct is on, kicks in, but like, oh, until shit, then, I'm wrong. I'm fighting. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. But until that point, they didn't know. Yep. And I think a lot of times when you set the hook, they're aware of it. The smaller fish feel that where their head gets turned. Oh, and, and, they, and they just go <laughs> right because the they that? feel and the they tug run. right away. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. but the Good bigger point. fish is so big enough that they don't necessarily register it right away. They don't. They, they probably feel something move, 
but that probably f- happens with the size of the fish that they eat too. Yeah. Where they feel that movement. Sure. And they're just like, yeah, I've yeah. been here before. Yeah. Wait until he stops moving. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. I, I'll say this. I think that they feel pain. I think they think they feel some sort of pain. It's not going to stop me from fishing the way that I fish. No. I already feel like getting and eating them. And uh, like we've changed the way we dispatch our fish. And yeah. I, like, you know what I mean? Like I want to start snipping gills mostly because of the meat. I want to eat it because you can keep it alive until you put it on the table and knock it out. You know, right. stuff like that. But yeah, I, I'm not going to cut open a live fish. <laughs> I'm not going to dis. I'm not going right. to murder my fish without doing it with just a knife <laughs> right on a table while it drowns yeah. in the open air. No, I'm not doing yeah. that anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, that no. that one felt cruel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But okay, yep. Okay, fish are fish can sense when something's weird. Yeah. Is it pain? Yeah could be it's stress in some way it's a distress in some way i'll say and then they yeah. can pick up an environment an environmental change that makes them feel better yep right pretty much learn that from their brains they're smart enough to pick up on environmental change okay yep yep i just don't think that they're processing anything that much i don't think that you can in any way stop yourself from catching a certain kind of fish because we've me and you You've showed it before. I've showed it before on like our social media channels. Yep. You're going to catch a sunny when you're going for bass and you got to throw it back because you're not going to catch 10 more sunny to make a meal out of it. Right. You're going to hook that damn thing. That's all there Mm -hmm. is to it. You can't Mm -hmm. stop that. It's going to happen. So in the end, I'm just going to say, sure. If you don't want to fish because you think that fish feel pain, and that's the way you want to do it, then okay. You know what? Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, yes, fish do feel pain. Zzz. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. When I said the hug, he's gonna feel it. Yep. That's how it is. Yep. And and I don't think that there's a bad thing with catch and release because of that either. Like just sport bass fishing. Yeah. Dude, the amount of fish that the money of the sport is bringing in that's it's saved, like the mon- amount of earth and water that mm-hmm. the funds from outdoors people who enjoy catch and release. I mean, fly fishers, there you go. No, like they have a rep in the they have a rep in the in the fishing community as being the softest people in fishing. Only <laughs> catch and release. You know? Right. Oh, I'm just out here for the tranquility. And the hooking fish in the face part. Right. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, yep. Hey. That's my stance on it. I, I, And that's the science behind it, like, leading up to it. Yeah. I don't know, Tim. What do you think? I'm, I'm in the same boat as you, man. Yeah. Like, okay. even if they feel pain, I don't think they're smart enough to really register it it's, or that it would last even that long right like yeah. it won't last longer than the stress of catching them or anything like that and it just seems when you let a fish go and you watch it just swim away yeah it seems to be over that shit pretty quickly <laughs> yeah well and people i've caught the same fish multiple times <laughs> Like so you can like, tell because it's the one with the fucked up eye, right? Yeah, yeah, because I fucked him up last time. <laughs> 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 no, most of the time it's like there's there's like a little spot on their lip that's you know like healing. You can oh, see sure. that there's like yep. it's healing up a little bit, but it doesn't right. stop them. Like clearly, that looks a little bit tender, and they're still out there eating more than their fair share because right. you'll catch them too. And they'll, they'll like spit up in the live well, you know, for some of these fish that you are keeping. Yep. Yep. And you're just like, you ate more fish than you needed to. <laughs> I can Clearly see you're not in that much pain. Like <laughs> you have the wound on your lip that's healing mm-hmm. and you're still going all out. Right. Right. So it, it can't be that bad. Yeah. Yep. 
And it's it's kind of crazy to think too, where if anybody would use that argument, just be like, they do feel, feel pain because these doctors who I'm on the side of were injecting fish with acid. Right. You're like, damn, dude, that sounds crazy. You're right. Like, let's prove a point here and fuck these fish up yeah. bad. <laughs> right. Like, really give them some fucking good pain. <laughs> yeah, dude. That That's a crazy... I think... I think more, the more impressive part of that study was not that we can prove that there's pain, but that they have a reasoning ability to go away from the structure I normally want. Right. I will swim to where the painkiller is when I have the acid in me. Right. Like yeah, that the environmental seems... change that is part of their that we are, you know, we talked about it. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just built into their brain. It's their cerebellum is just like, yeah. Kicking in. Doing However it works. It's just there. It just understands comfort. Yeah. Cause it's the same thing with like the winter. Oh, the water temperature has dropped. I will, you know, mm-hmm. go retreat into right. the deeper water to right. where the water temperature is where I want to be. Right. So I guess it makes sense in that regard, but yeah. to even be able to put that together of just like, yeah, the tank over there is empty, but when I swim into it, see, that just seems crazy. It's real good. Like when, when would they even learn that? When would they ever even choose the empty tank to learn that? Environmental change. They can probably just pick up on it in some way. Like I, it's I, yeah. crazy. It's pretty gnarly. I know. Yeah. I have so is. many questions. I just want to like sit down with the scientists for a while. I know. And Be just like, here, how did you figure this out? It's so crazy to think about. It really is. Right. And so. what was your control group? Are they just junkies? <laughs> did you did you, did you put did you Who put bass? This isn't a crackhead fish. <laughs> did you put bass in there that didn't have acid in them, and see if those guys were still just like bro. Obviously, I'm going where the painkillers are. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Duh. No, they did. If you heard, uh, I said that at the beginning. Like the control was they put oh, the fish you? in first, just totally normal, and they went to the environment. Right, but you said you were saying that there's like one with like the weeds and one with just empty. Yeah, and then there was like, like it's just and a then, water tank, and then there's like they put a painkiller in there. Was that painkiller in there before? They had oh been. Put, I got you. Yeah, that's what I'm recall. wondering. I don't recall that part of it. I I like because I know what you're saying. I want to say pain... yes, that was it wasn't a totally empty tank. That yes, okay. it always had the painkiller in it. Because maybe their pain receptors aren't that good, but their pleasure receptors. Bro, I love oh, the child. They're just, they're just like <laughs> yeah, we want that clean, clear water, bro. Yeah, yeah. I so I, I guess I didn't take good notes on that part, but you make a yeah, you make a really good point. I don't know what it is about this open space, but I am just vibing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> just, All right, just, dude. Speaking feel. of vibing, let's get vibing on some old video games. Episode sixty four. I had to bring some N sixty four to the table. We're gonna talk yeah. about our past, present, future with N sixty four. I think that was a really cool topic about the fishing nerve system. Yeah, dude. It for made sure. it, it made for made for some really good conversation. Um, had a lot of science in it, and um, yeah, I'm I'm happy with that one. Uh, not that I'm not saying, <laughs> not that I'm saying I'm shitting on the other ones. What I'm <laughs> saying is, it was worth the wait. That's what I'm really saying is like it was worth the wait. Once we got this far in the podcast, we got our cadence down, we got our setups down pretty well, and. Uh, it was right for me to hold on to that one in our longer format. So I'm glad we did that. Let's move on to the random take where we're going to talk some video games. So here we go. On to N64. Hit the break. Yeah. Here we are. Patreon.com slash real AFTV. That's right. Patreon.com slash real AFTV. Real like fish and real. We are on patreon and we are coming to tell you and by we i mean me and tim real af tv podcast here yep. coming to you to say we have a patreon 
as low as $1 a month, but hey, you could go up to 100 if you really wanted to get crazy with it. It's there. Go mm. over to our website, realaf.tv. You can find the Patreon link right there or go to Patreon and look us up, Real AF TV, Real Like Fish and Real. And we have things like for $50 a month, we will customize... Uh, what kind of tackle is it, Tim? We have some in the warehouse right now that we haven't actually... A, a lure, yes. A lure, thank it you. Is a is a crankbait. Crankbait. Yes, we will customize a crankbait for you. At yes, the fifty dollar tier. Also, Patreon. If you're new to the whole Patreon thing, if you're on a podcast, you're probably not that new to it. But Patreon is is something that you can jump in and out of. Like if you do fifty dollars this month, bam, you get the custom lure. But you don't want to do that for the whole year. You jump down to the $5 a month tier where you're going to get early access content. You can help vote on the random take, uh, yep. one of the random takes for the month. And, uh, you know, we'll keep up with you on Patreon as well. Like a, just a direct Patreon contact. There's communication you do only through Patreon. That's what I'm trying to say. So sure. if you're new, yep. there's just a little intro to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And to clarify that that custom paint and lure is a fully custom paint and lure, like the pattern and everything. That yes. won't be just something that we have a lure that we just like write real AF TV out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for, yeah. for clearing that up because yes, it, it, it is a, it's a, it's a slug for lack of a better word right now. And it will be turned into something. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at the the whole fishing lingo, so maybe Tim, you could evaluate on that a little, or like elaborate on. Yeah, that I mean, it's, a, it's, it's it's yeah. Right now, it has no color, and I will give it color. I, there it we go. Will, it will look like a uh, a bait fish imitation of some sort. It might not be exactly colored. It might not be realistic. You know, some of that stuff out there yeah. that yeah. the different companies work with makes different stuff, but it will be a custom painted uh, lure. Lure. And yep. it won't Just look like you. dog shit. <laughs> I, not, to, not to be like, too full of myself, but I'm, I'm, I have some talent. You, you have some artistic talent. Yes. Yeah. Very true. And before we wrap up the ad here for patreon.com slash real TV, we do have a goal too. We're ha goals right now. We only have one goal set, but there is, uh, if we get up to 10 patrons, um, this year or this month even, which would be great. So share with a friend, uh, we will do a live stream AMA while fishing. We are yeah. capable of live streaming fishing. We've done it before. Yes. Check out the YouTube yeah. channel. Um, and yeah, we'll just do an AMA. We'll schedule it. We'll do all the communications through uh, Patreon. And we'll go live with a AMA of undetermined length at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah. While fishing. So yeah. if you can get us up to 10 patrons, if you know friends and family and stuff like that, that got a few bucks to kick our way, let them know. TV. Scroll down a little bit. There's the Patreon link. It'll shoot you right over. Sign up for a little bit. Yeah. Welcome back to the Real AF TV podcast. Show about fishing random takes from Orlando, 10,000 lakes. We are going to talk about video games. How many times has the random take been about video games? Every time. No. <laughs> every, every time. 80% of the time. 80% of the time. It's about it every time. <laughs> <laughs> that's right we're going to talk about the n64 and our history and stuff with it if you are listening to this on friday on youtube thank you for finding us we also we mostly do fishing stuff over there on this uh here channel and uh, you should go check out the one we just did on the nervous system of fish do they Hell feel yeah. pain it was a good one it was fun mm -hmm. now we're going to have a little bit more fun and you better believe I'm going to bring some history to this, Tim. <laughs> you better yeah. believe it. We got the N64 on deck. Episode 64, N64, the only 64 bit system like ever to be released, whatever the fuck that was about. Uh, so this is where I want to kick it off. They were running the tech in the arcades. They were running this N64 tech basically. Okay. In arcades in 94 
already. And they were like, we're going to bring it to the house, to the homes by 95. Now, me and you, we're arcade kids. Yep. Do you remember playing N64 games in like 94? Because I don't know that America had it yet. Like it doesn't I don't seem- know if I'd be playing N64 games, but when you said that, I was thinking like the like original Virtual Fighter definitely felt like that could have been like a 64-bit. It could have been. 3D because of yeah, how... because that's like, Sega. So that was a different hard yeah. piece of hardware, but it could have been. Because yeah, I don't remember weird. any... I don't remember anything that was like specifically Nintendo in the arcades. Oh, no. I don't think Nintendo... No, so I, I should say Nintendo like 64. Sh- I do remember like Nintendo games that were, but it was always weird. Like when you found a Mario Brothers in the arcade, oh, you're right. like, for real? That's kind of a weird one. Well, Donkey like, Kong. There Donkey, Kong. Donkey Kong is some bowling yeah, for alleys, sure, right? for sure. Yeah. But like the original, I mean, I saw the original Mario, like the side-scrolling, like original Mario in the arcades. What? Where it's, yeah, dude, it was weird. What the hell? And, and like the only reason is just like to show off what to show how far you can make it. Put in your quarter and be like, I got this game at home, R- right? And I'm going to show <laughs> you how far I can make it, right? Yeah, that's fucking weird. <laughs> I didn't yeah, know that. Not... There was a Mario Bros. arcade. I knew that, but I didn't know it was just like, oh, it's the same fucking one that I play on my Nintendo at home. Yeah, I think you could play like the the regular one for a while, I believe. But the I think the main part of it was the like the verses, where it's oh, yeah. you and yeah, Luigi that and the then the, that pow thinking. that pow thing, right? And then the turtles and yeah, you're going. It's a it's a head to head battle. Yeah. I remember that, that one was good. I thought that one, I think that's that same machine where you could play multiple the regular Mario game, but nobody ever did that shit. Mm-hmm. I forget. The I name might be, it, I might course, be. Rem- okay. That's funny because I might remember wrong too. I don't know. No, I think you might be, but I don't know. I don't know all the, all the logistics behind this, but of course this is the best ever. The Mario movie coming out soon. Yes. And Seth Rogen is in it. So, yep. And they kind of did a thing of like, I saw these shorts online of like, what was your favorite memory of a Nintendo game or whatever? And Seth came with that arcade game that was multiple Nintendo games in one cabinet. I can't oh, even remember yeah. what it is. Everyone else is like, Mario Bros. was the best, man. I love Mario Bros. And then Seth is like, oh, yeah. My favorite was Nintendo 41, and it was this arcade cabinet that had everything in it. I do. Nice. I had to look it up. I was just like, "Holy shit, this guy is a fucking real <laughs> OG." <laughs> when it comes to games, yeah, it's crazy. So you might have seen that cabinet, dude. And those just not known it, right? Yeah, those were the best ones, though. <clears throat> like all those machines where they had like multiple games in it. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, like those Galica were always one that one that had yeah. Galica and Pac Man in it or something like that. Yeah, those were always the best. Where like I remember there was a place not to go off on a side tangent, but yeah, like when I was younger, there was right, right there was there was there was like a pizza place and they had one arcade machine. Yeah. But that yeah. arcade machine had like four different fighting games in the same one. In one. And it was awesome, dude. Hell yeah. It was dude. awesome. Cause every time you go there. That's sick. You'd be like, can I get a quarter? And they're like, you really want to play that game again? I'm going to play a different game, bro. <laughs> it's the same game, but yeah, I'm going to play a different one. But I'm going to play this time. <laughs> right. This you is the fourth time it, we're here. Yeah, this is the fourth time we're here. I'm about to hit that, what's that, that quad fecta. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tried the other three. We're about to play this fourth one. <laughs> then a little bit later you come back and just be like does cheese bread come out no can i have another quarter that fourth game kind of sucked yep <laughs> it always was like that dude i don't know why but it was <laughs> okay okay so i'm gonna bring it back to n64 and this is how i'm gonna frame it now with the arcade right so we got this is what they wanted to do they 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 Nintendo paired with a different company and they said that they were going to, they were going to they're running 64 bit in arcade by 94 they're going to bring it to homes by 95 Okay. Yeah, that didn't happen. So June of 96 it gets in Japan, September of 96 it gets in the, it gets dropped in the US. It was supposed to launch in April of 96. Damn, dude. A console got delayed, dude. If that happened today, man, people would lose their 
fucking mind. Happened with Xbox. What? Right? Then the that original, original Xbox. Xbox where they were like, it's going to come out here. Probably. And then they couldn't figure out how to fit all the hardware inside that giant oh, VCR that box. box. Yeah, the biggest fucking console on the market, <laughs> and they couldn't fit the hardware in it. <laughs> and then they yeah. had to push back the release date because they couldn't figure out how to make it happen. Yeah, I think that did happen. Yeah, it's so weird to think about like that. I I remember it that. It seemed doomed. It seemed doomed. Because we were laughing really so ridiculous. hard at it. Oh, yeah. Because it was the exact same time when they're just like, oh, we got to push it back because we can't figure it out. And then PlayStation came out with the ps2 that was the size of a dvd case right and they're just like you guys can't fit it was it was almost just like them slapping him in the face <laughs> you guys can't figure out how to fit it all look at ours look how and small just we like, just made ours we just made it even yeah. smaller <laughs> i remember coming over to your house because i bought one of those and i just had like a coat on oh and yeah I, like, put it under the coat and i was yes. just like dude check this out I remember this too. It's like in the coat. Like you right. didn't even know I had it. No, <laughs> like, I remember that. Small. I remember. Yeah, I mean, oh, fuck. No way. And then just shitting on the Xbox. Cause just be like, the PS2 is so small. You didn't even know I had it. And they can't figure out how to fit everything in that giant VCR box. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's right. And they're dude, so good was... now. Like an Xbox is so good. It's just so funny. To, like if they didn't have Microsoft money, dude, they'd have been fucked. They would have been like Sega. Like they yeah. would have never got out of the gate. That would have been it. Right. Dude, I was trying to think of like all the different video games back then. Do you think Primal Rage was the N64 game? No, not the original. No? Okay. No. But I, that I'm is, literally that's... trying to go through all the games in my head. So that's the thing. You know, go, well, here. What was, the, what was the Dreamcast? Uh, Dreamcast was uh, 128 already, I think. That, yeah, because that was on the same... Because I was thinking like crazy taxi and yeah. stuff. Yep. I can't even remember what was like right so before that. That's yeah, that's exactly it. Let me let me jump in here and say, like, okay, so this is what I remember N64 for and why I thought N64 was a shitty system then. And it it still is. It just has a few good games. I mean, it's a shit system in my opinion. <laughs> there. I said yeah. it. I said yeah, it. I want I want one for Mario Party. Yeah. And I want that's one it. so I can play, yeah, the five good games on it which right right we'll, there's we'll, the five yeah exactly <laughs> we'll get into it in a, in a, in a second but this yep. is yeah this is it this is the perfect thing because it was like this thing is in the arcades and those big arcade cabinets and like yeah how did you get it down into a tiny box or what is your plan to get into the tiny box right that's like where we're what you just said all that stuff is how do you downscale the arcade and that was nintendo's goal so this is where it hits me i loved these fucking games and I, I, this is, I would buy just for this. If I could get a good steering wheel and arcade set up, I would, I would buy an N64 and hook it up to this. You, these were the games that hit me. You got Cruising World, Cruising USA. Ooh. Yeah, dude. Okay. Hydro Thunder. You have Hell all of yeah. those like midway games that were oh. running on the 64 bit architecture. They were all yeah. driving games though. Was the was the first MotoGP? Um, I don't know for sure on that one. When you were saying all those, that's what I was thinking. But yeah, dude, that makes because sense. Then, those yeah. were good. Yeah, because later they ended up being like those those uh, biking games where you'd like get on the crotch rocket and lean back and forth and left and oh, right. Oh yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. Like those were running on sixty four bit architecture. Okay, okay. Yeah, and then Sega you're right came out with crazy taxi and so like our yeah those arcade years where they blended quite a bit because then crazy taxi and the sega bass game and those oh, 128 sure. bits oh, sure. started dropping house of the dead 2 yep. came out on 128 like Ooh, hardware yes it, yeah yep. we quickly made that transition but that 64 bit hardware hung in there hard with yep. those like racing games on it man house of the dead that's a good one Dude, that still that stands game. up. You still find that shit. I mean, it's like on House of the Dead 8 or whatever now, but I don't right. think it's that high up, but it's crazy. No, but it is. Yeah. And so, yeah, those those first, those early Midway racing games, those were 64 because those were the only places I remember like the Off-Road Challenge was one of my favorite games in the arcade. I loved it. Could only get it on N64. Yeah. They that makes sense. It. I didn't even think about all those games because nobody bought any of those games for your home. No, because that was only fun when you're sitting in the chair. 
That's exactly it because I played. So one of the first times ever, our neighbors got one. And so I went over and I spent the night and I spent the majority of the night playing Cruising World. Yeah. And I think Donkey Kong. I can't remember the other one. But I was playing a lot of Cruising World. And yeah, dude, it's not fun. I played no. for like three hours, and that's what I mean by the majority of the night. You know, you go over there yeah, after yeah. dinner, you got three hours, you're a little kid, you only have three more hours, you watch a movie, you go to sleep. Yeah, dude, they sucked at home. Like, mm-hmm. they were they were dumb. For sure. <laughs> yeah, they weren't that good in the game. And like, at the like the like the the physics and everything, of like the, the turning and stuff, it was kind of shitty, but because you're in the car and you can like, you know, do your whole thing in the, and the speakers are right there. Like, yep. And the force the feedback whole, is, is really strong. Yeah. yeah exactly. It's still an arcade. Though. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's the whole, it's the whole setup of it's it. The experience yep. is what made it good. You yeah. bring that home and you're just like, this is the same thing <laughs> over and over and over. Yep. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There, I, that Hydro Thunder, that one might have been okay. I liked Hydro Thunder home. a lot. I just bought it on PS1. I found out it was on PS1. I went to the used video game store the next weekend. They had it. I about shit my nice. and I bought it. <laughs> nice. It's going to be the jankiest version of it because that one actually did make it on the Dreamcast. So it might yeah. have been running 128 in the arcade. Yeah. So long story short, it could be the 128 version that I'm used to playing. And now I have a 32-bit version. It could be shitty. <laughs> sure, I don't care. sure. I bought it anyway. Yeah, i I had a on the original PlayStation. It wasn't as fun as that Hydro Boat Racing, but it was okay. And it was called Power Boat Racing. Oh, nice. yeah. It was Power like Boats the same. then meaning the ones that like fly above the water. They're just barely hanging on. I. It was very similar to the Hydro Thunder, oh, but okay. just it just didn't. It. It just wasn't as cool. Right. It didn't it have was like kind of No, it was kind of the same idea of stuff, but like more in a realistic setting. Gotcha. They're just like, it's like nice sunshine and you're in like a cool setting. And I'm like, no, I want that weird, I want dark, that, like what's going on? Volcano. Glowing, and... glowing thing that says boost on it. Like, give me right. that boost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you're, oh, you know what? A little more history because this was crazy to me. I wanted to say this quick. When the N64 launched, dude, it launched at $199. So it was the actually price? cheap. Yeah, it was 200 bucks. It was cheaper nice. than a, a PlayStation at the time. Yeah. PlayStation dropped their price. I read that they dropped their price. Like when the N64 came around and started gaining a little bit of ground, they the PlayStation yeah. dropped their price. And so then it was just like, uh, you've been out gunned again (laughs) sure and also december of 94 and september of 95 december 94 in japan september 95 is when the playstation came out so playstation had a year or more lead on n64 already coming out of the gate so yeah damn dude anyways so 199 they just come out they just drop the price right to 199 hoping that that you know that's going to sell systems after the delay and everything saturn was 399 when it came out jeez and playstation was 299 and then nintendo comes out and drops 199 it's like holy shit dude things were getting hectic dude and what did i mean how many games did saturn even have like five yeah virtual fighter in daytona or usa (laughs) yeah dude exactly daytona usa i remember we rented the council once oh from the video store with the daytona yep and like i'm i'm not a nascar fan at all but it was like all 3d and stuff and it was like this is pretty cool yep because i didn't have a playstation yet right and then i got a playstation (laughs) and i was like dude what the hell man i know how did nascar 95 look so much better than daytona usa it's just crazy Um, yeah but on that note did you ever rent an n64 nope yeah no i did not no well because i had like neighbors that had n64s 
Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's that your same Saturn experience would... with the N64. Yep. Yeah. My, yeah. Yeah. I think the Saturn we rented just because nobody else had it and oh, it was too yeah. expensive to buy. Yeah. So then it was you had one like, of those where this we're just guy like, had N64, you had PlayStation. Yeah. Like three out of the five people in the neighborhood had PlayStations. Two people had N64s. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I might have been the only one that had a PlayStation. Oh, interesting. It was like I had a PlayStation, a couple of people had N64s. And then mm-hmm. we rented a Saturn. Interesting. So yeah. Yeah, it was it was good shit though. Yeah. Like the N sixty four, like people around me definitely had the games worth having. Oh yeah. And some of those games weren't even that good. Mm-hmm. But just because, it, like the the community aspect of it, yeah, like yeah, uh, Battle Toads. What there was a Battle Toads game on there? I don't I don't remember if that was on N sixty four or if it was or Super, it was Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo or what. <laughs> well, I can't I can remember. Tell you it was what. definitely on Super Nintendo. Maybe that was maybe that's what we were playing it on. But Super Nintendo, where you're just like that game now. Like I've replayed it, and you're just like it's not that great. But when you were a kid. And it was you and another kid, and yeah. like it's the whole neighborhood, and you're all yeah. rocking that game at the same time. Yeah, dude, that's a good ass game. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. So with the N64 stuff, let me ask because like, okay, launched in Japan with Mario and Pilot Wings, or it, it launched with Mario and Pilot Wings. Like that's kind of all it needed to kick off, and then quickly after launch, it got Wave Race, Killer Instinct, which. By the way, that was an arcade game running on the 64-bit architecture. See, that's and okay. Cruising Killer USA. Instinct is very close to that primal rage. Yep. Oh, and Mortal Kombat, but Mortal Kombat was running on PlayStation also, so I don't know why that was even right. a big, like a mention. Well, Mortal Kombat started on Super Nintendo. Yeah. Oh, and that same Mortal Kombat, right? Mortal Kombat th- trilogy, I think it was, or something like that. I have more. I had Ultimate Ultimate Mortal Kombat three. On yeah. Super Nintendo, so they definitely went to three. Yeah, and then when they and then they went over to the, so uh, over to PlayStation and N sixty four, and I think it was all. I think it was. I can picture the damn thing in my head. It's orange. It's mostly an orange background, black logo. Anyways, let's not dive into that. Okay, right. so <laughs> those games. Did you have? Did any of those? Did you have those? Like, did the neighborhood have any of those games? The kids you went to, any of the? Go- I mean, they had like, I... Mario, right? I rented Killer Instinct a bunch, nice. but I didn't have an N64, so I don't know what I was renting it on. Maybe the, maybe I had it on the PlayStation. I, yeah, I don't know where it came out, but I just... The reason why Killer Instinct was like a big one for N64 was that my understanding is it was running the same game as the arcade. Like you were getting the arcade experience at home right. where everything right. else was a port, right? Sure. So like, that was that yeah. was my impression that I got. I could yeah. I could be wrong. That was a cool game, man. That was a cool game. Yeah. But the, my neighborhood friends um 007. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Sure. Four player everybody Did you do come four over. player? Did you have that yeah, four dude. player experience? Oh, dude, yeah. I'm so jealous. I didn't have that. Yeah, that was a good time. Four player when you run around Except for like the kid that owns it and knows where to get the golden gun. You're like, no, dude, this is not <laughs> cool. You don't get to do that anymore. You know, it just be yeah. like eventually you're just like, this is not okay. Right. You can't have that. I don't it's think I ever did very good on that game because I had no idea where I was going, what I was doing. Right. Yeah. And then he would always know the maps and then you just get shot. You're like, yep. dude, I don't even know where you were. <laughs> He's like, don't worry about it. <laughs> <You know? Bastard>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we played we played that and um i know that i saw i i remember like having the debate with our buddy sam over mm-hmm. um the mario 64 game mm-hmm. because he he said it was good and i was like my whole um experience with that game was watching somebody else play it right so my memory of the game was just like dude that game sucks dick because <laughs> all i got to do was sit behind the guy running around in a three-dimensional world right right it's like where golden eye 
we have four people and we're all just like, right. Jump we're all jump running around. <laughs> yeah. And then that game, like you just get to sit there while one guy plays the game. Yeah. And you got bored. Yeah. Yeah. So I never really, I, I don't think I ever played it because it was you oh. know, his like save game. And he's just like, yeah, I'm just mm. playing this right now. Yep. Like, yep. okay, cool. Play it when I leave, maybe. <laughs> right, right, right. Because this is boring as fuck. Yeah. Did you have the Mario Kart experience? Because this is the first 3D Mario Kart. Like, you know, there's Super Mario Kart. Yeah. And then there's like, and now you brought Mario Kart into fucking what Mario Kart is. Yeah. And you said you had the four players and all that. Did you have that? I think we did. I think we did. I was trying to think. I don't think it was the, the Super Nintendo one. Because I think it, it was the 3D version. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm pretty sure we did. But yeah. I don't, I think it was just, I don't think we ever... Is there a four player version? Oh yeah. Yeah. We may have where you yeah. just have your one little screen. I can't mm-hmm. remember if it was all four of us racing at the same time. But I definitely remember racing. Yeah. In the in the three D so that had in to the have 3D been the N64. space. Yeah. 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 That game is sick. I had that. I did have that. I had a cousin that had an N sixty four and so we got to play a little bit there. I I just like watched that game for like two hours yeah dude and then i was like okay can i play it can we play and he's we could do two player and i'm like shit yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that one's entertaining to even watch it is because, because there's just, always something going on oh it's there's constant a lot of action yep yeah hitting your dice blocks getting your things shooting stuff everybody's moving always you're getting hit by stuff you're hitting other people with stuff it's a good game good game yeah I got to get one of the, I think we'll graduate to the new one pretty soon with a racing game for my son. Oh, he's starting to get the grasp on video games. So it, it, it's, I think it's on sale. Check your target. Is it? Check your target ad. Might have to look into that. Yeah. Because it's that time of the year where it's Mario time. So yeah. Yeah. Target. I think it might have to 40 bucks. I'm, I haven't looked into it yet. Are you, do you have the online, like the no. Nintendo online? That is exactly where this topic is going. Is it? Is it? <laughs> because, yes, I have Nintendo online. Um, it's fucking awesome. I play Splatoon. I spl- I used to play the shit out of Splatoon. Now I play a pretty good okay. amount of Splatoon. Yeah. Um, And you have to have Nintendo online to get it. Yeah. Um, but here's the catch. I do not have the Nintendo online expansion pack. I haven't pulled the trigger okay. on this yet. So Nintendo online expansion pack is a bunch of stuff, but it's N64 games. The N64 games are on the next tier up. I hit the mic. Okay. And every good fucking N64 game is on that service, dude. <laughs> really? I'm telling you. So this is what I have written down besides beca- besides Killer Instinct and Cruising World and Cruising USA and those sort of things, you know, Mortal Kombat that I already said, right? Yeah. It took the the online service, right? Yeah. Has all the stuff that I'm about to say because this is the list I wrote down of Games that came out on N64 and that were worth it. <laughs> right, right. So you have the year that it came out in 96, right? You get yep. Mario, Pilot Wings, Wave Race, Cruising World. Then 97, you get Mario Kart and Turok. Later Ooh, in 97, you get Turok. GoldenEye, you get Star Fox. Turok was a good one. I played that one quite a bit too at a friend's house. Did I forgot you? about that. Yeah. Yeah. So we yeah. have some mutual friends that had an N64, yeah. and they love to rock too. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. Not gonna name it. I'm not gonna name the name here, but like the people who lived out on the farm, way out on the farm. Okay. Uh, yeah, they loved it. That family loved it. Yeah, dude. Did you um, play it? Uh, no. I watched for oh, a little yeah. bit and I was like, I don't know. This seems, I don't know. It doesn't seem good. Yeah. To me. No, when you play it, it's kind of cool. It's like you're a dinosaur hunter. Yeah. 
I love yeah. the concept. I think it's yeah. fucking cool as hell. Yeah. So I don't know that that one's on expansion pack, but I'll tell you, there's a few po. There's okay. So N64 had a few good Pokemon games. 1080 snowboarding, Banjo Kazooie, Ooh, two Zelda yeah. games. Okay. And yep. three Mario Party games. Yeah, dude. Those are, that's what I need it for, because that's the ones I don't have. I have four through eight. Oh my god! And I don't want nine or ten because the whole like we're all on the same ship. We all move together. It oh, doesn't, no, yeah. the the board game aspect is what's fun that it's everybody fun, moves which around. Which they brought the board. back for the Switch. Yeah, yep. Mario Party is on sale right now because everybody else was like, "What is this bullshit?" <laughs> So they brought back the original because they realized, like, this is a colossal mistake. Yeah. And the new ones are fucking awesome. But hell yeah. I haven't played them yet, I just but I've said, heard good dude, things. Everything I just said is on the expansion pack. By the end of this year, all three Mario parties are going to be on Switch online expansion pack. Both Zelda games already on there. 1080 is coming soon. Um, the few Pokemon games, they have Pokemon Snap on there. Um, I believe I read that Pokemon Stadium is coming. Okay, to that. I haven't Mario I heard... Kart's on there, dude. Golden Eyes on there, like yeah, they have them all, all the games, <laughs> all of how the ma- good. Do you know how much that ex- games are on there? On do you the know how much that pack. is? Do you know how much that is? I don't, but I only pay like I think I pay less than forty dollars a year. It's cheap, yeah, dude. I looked. It's, the, I think it's less. I think it's less than that because it's only, it's only like four dollars a month. Yeah, it's like three ninety nine a month if you pay it monthly. Yeah, and if you do it yearly, I want to say it's only like thirty bucks. Yeah, and that's I, for the I didn't know so if my wife would pack be is the, the the expansion pack's a little bit more. Okay, that's, I didn't know if my wife would be okay with it either, and I was just like talking. I was like. I mean, like we could get all those old ones, and 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 I literally was just like, because we could, you know, sign up for that. And she's like, "How much is it?" I'm like, "I think it's like four dollars a month." And she's like, "Why don't we have it?" <laughs> like, oh, okay, all right, yeah, yeah, right. dude. <laughs> no, say say no more. We'll get it. We'll get it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I I highly recommend at least the base version. Um. Uh, and I'm trying to find the price right now. Well, if you're seeing me looking down. Um, but here's here's what I want to say about the N64 stuff is you do have to get the expansion pack. $50. Yep. 50 bucks. Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack is $50 a year. 50 bucks for a year. So cheap. That's the expansion. Yeah. Regular like that's, online is 20 That's everything plus your extra stuff. Yeah. And I'll get into that more. But like... When they dropped, so they just dropped the N64 stuff recently. Yeah. Every single time that they've dropped one of these online thingies, yeah. <laughs> like every time they drop it, like first it was Nintendo regular and then it was Super Nintendo, right? And those come on the regular expansion pack. When they did that, they yeah. they they set out Switch controllers. Like if you have an online pass, you can go to Nintendo and log into your account and there's a store that's behind this sign-in wall and you can buy a Nintendo controller that works wirelessly with your Switch. It's a recreation of the original Nintendo controller that works with your Switch. You can do it for the Super Nintendo and you can do it for the N64 too. Yeah. I don't know why the fuck you would want an N64 controller though. (laughs) I don't. That was the one thing I didn't understand at all every time we're playing it i'm just like this is such a stupid and of course the kid that has it has to just be like oh, it's a really cool controller oh, yeah you gotta say that because you spent all the money on the system you gotta exactly like, oh, that's the best right just be and like, bought hey. three more of those motherfucking controllers right. too on top yeah. of that <laughs> you just want to tell them like you you know i got a playstation right right you want to act like you got a good controller when you know i have a playstation controller right which is stupid. literally going to you be know. the form that every controller from here just modifies on. <laughs> you know it. You know it's the best. Don't yeah. even come at me with that. No. 
That N sixty four controller is shit. I d- I disagree with people too with like the Xbox ones, because my brain likes things symmetrical. Oh, and where they're just like, no, I, I actually like offset. it when the sticks are offset. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't. My hands are never next to each other. Yeah, I want them next to each other. Yeah, bothers me. So I maybe prefer dual ca- like working a camera. Yeah. And, yep. I prefer the PlayStation. My two thumbs next to each other doing the same thing. Like, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, yeah, no, I totally agree. But that's the other thing, though, about the N64 controller is props to that thing for having a joystick on it, though, for the first time, right? Like to, yeah, dude. to embed oh, yeah, that a joystick cool. into the controller for the, like, yeah, the whole controller. It wasn't its own separate joystick controller now. There was a joystick in it for the right. first time, which was dope. Other dude. than that. Fuck that controller. <laughs> I wonder if I don't. That's got to be false. I don't know. I just put in like uh, N sixty four Mario Party, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I was gonna make this point of just like fifty dollars a year is so cheap. Mm-hmm. Because, like, how how good of a deal is that when the N sixty four Mario Party? It's got to be a ton of money. And then... It's fairly expensive. What'd you find? That's what I thought, right? There's a lot of 1, 2, and 3 for thirty nine ninety eight on Etsy. And I was like... No. That's okay. not real, is it? No. You get all three games? No, they're not. So, okay. I'll tell you. I have numbers. <laughs> okay. So... You're right. At so because we're talking N sixty four. Did your wife had an N sixty four? No, she had oh, a okay. Sega. Yeah, she was and a Sega only kid. a Sega. I don't think she, yep. she had a Super. She did have a Super Nintendo. She had a Super Nintendo and a Sega, and that's as far and as a it Sega went. Genesis. Yeah. Yep. yep. She never had a PlayStation or anything beyond that. Right. My wife did have the N sixty four, but she sold it before I knew her. So I'm like, God damn it. Mm, sure. So, Otherwise, I would have one and because I, I definitely want one. But I'm going to tell you this. I wanted to inherit one because I looked on eBay. They're going for 100, 150 bucks for the console and one controller right now. Which is fine. Whatever. Right. But yeah, then you I have mean, to try to buy the games. And yeah, the games ain't that cheap. Yeah, no. sure. They have Tony Hawk, too. They got Tony Hawk, too. Cool. It wasn't really that up It wasn't that great. And how in the fuck do you play Tony Hawk, too, on that shitty controller? <laughs> right. But that... So the Mario Parties, they used to be super expensive. They were, I remember, five, seven years ago. Yeah. Mario Party 1 went for 100 bucks minimum right. for the cartridge. So those definitely on Etsy are fake. And I'll tell you more about why they're fake in a second. But okay, so you got eBay showing me that the N64 and one controller is 100, 150 bucks right now. Then you have to get mm-hmm. the game. I think the last time I saw a couple years ago, I actually saw Mario Party 2. They still wanted 59.99, 60 bucks for that game. Okay. Now, as this online thing's rolling out, yeah, you start seeing people turn in their games, and so the market becomes a little bit flooded, and it does lower the price. So it's not a bad time if you do want to invest in the physical stuff. Yeah, to start looking for it, but you have to watch out for these fake, shitty ones because what Etsy has right now, dude. Yeah, I bet you're looking at reprints of cases, nothing else. They're for decoration. Really? Yeah. They just, they find old mold. Somebody makes the old mold and then sells yeah. the case because people will customize their own games. So like you can get a weird looking, you could get a clear red Pokemon case and yeah. you could take out your Pokemon red and put it in your new cool clear red case, right? And so you have a custom red Pokemon game. Sure. So people on Etsy are making these cases And selling just these game cases, which are for decoration or to wrap an old game in. Like you have an old sun faded copy of Mario Party. Oh, well, just take it apart and put it in the new one. Don't do that. Don't fucking touch the original one. But I think that might be what you're seeing. Um, Also, people are just blatantly selling piracy out there. Okay. 
uh, they just will flat out do it because they can get away with it long enough. And so you got to be super careful of that too. That right. people sell ROMs, which are just emulate, you know, version emulated versions. They're not even ROM dumps of the original game. They're like, yeah, it's not great. So you got to really make sure you get a, a legit copy of it. And another reason why, I don't know, if you don't want to go through all the trouble of getting the actual N64, just pay $50 a month and there it is on your Switch. Right, exactly. Yeah, because you don't have to. The N64, dude, it has that cult following. Like those kids who defended the controller, <laughs> right? Right. They've come right. to their senses now as adults, I'm sure. But they're still yeah. like, man, there's nothing like it. Right. Yeah, there is nothing like it. There's a reason for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's, you just got to you just gotta be like, it's the best. I do got to say maybe my favorite system for aesthetics yeah. because they were like, hey, why don't we release it in like 20 different colors and have it be translucent? Like, mm-hmm. dude... I would love it if the PlayStation did that. Like, do you want to do you want to see through a red one? Yeah. 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 Can I have a see through red PlayStation? That'd be dope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree, dude. I want that bright, translucent green one so bad. Yeah, dude. That's what so I bad. like. If I get one, I definitely don't want the gray. I want. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I want like just a cool color. I don't even care what color it is. <laughs> like, well, if do you remember j- that um, moment in time where the clear plastic was the shit, and like yeah. the Dual Shock, the Dual Shock Two, yeah, the PlayStation Two controllers were coming out. And they had like the clear one, the clear blue one, the clear red one, the clear green one, mm. right? And then N sixty four was like. How about an entire console? How about the whole console? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, people, the orange and the green and the blue. I think there's a pink one. Because yeah. it, it was this whole thing of just like you can see into it. How cool is that? Right. And especially with the Dual Shock, where they're yeah. like, you could see those things spin. Yeah, you could see the where, vibrating motors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How yeah. cool is that? That's super cool. It was super sick. Yeah, dude. And very, then very, oh, very cool. Speaking of like the used hardware quick here, we, we can wrap up as, uh, but talking about, yes, the, the N64 had some of the coolest looking consoles out there. You're, you're dead on with that. The Pokemon one. Do you remember the Pokemon one? The blue and yellow with the Pikachu on it? I thought it was all yellow. Is blue and yellow? Yeah, it was, mo- it was base blue and then it had okay. yellow accent with a big yellow Pikachu on it. No, dude, I don't. Yeah, it, that's just not look up Pokemon N64, uh, like Pokemon N64 console. And you correct me if I'm wrong, but I've seen this thing in used video game stores, dude. They basically don't sell it. Like they just have it in the used video game store because the owner just wants to be like, yeah, yeah. Check that shit out, right? Yeah, I got one. <laughs> you want to know how much it is? You ask me. <laughs> right. There's because, a, oh, it it has actual like, it's like a physical Pikachu on it. Yeah, like it's got a 3D Pikachu like mounted yeah. to it, dude. <laughs> no, I don't know if I ever saw that one. This one has like a Pokeball and the 3D Pikachu. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Isn't that thing fucking sick? Yeah, dude. They're selling that one for 230 bucks. Yeah, it is. The controllers are blue with the Pikachu on it. That's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. There's a Japanese version that's orange. What? On eBay, they're selling for $365. The translucent orange, right? No, it's just orange. Oh, wow. It's got I... like a Japanese writing on it and says Nintendo 64. And then underneath it, it's all Japanese. The whole case is Japanese. Oh, sick, dude. But yeah, it's an orange system. That's cool. I don't cool. know if you can see it real well. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Pikachu that. on there. Yeah, yeah, I totally saw the blue Pokemon, that you were talking Pokemon about. Pokemon version of it. Yeah, I've never seen that one before. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with you, man. I have to give it to the N64. I mean, they had some great games, but it just wasn't that much. There just wasn't that much. It wasn't worth it. And right. 
but hot damn those special consoles it was the best it was the best at that there's no Hell doubt yeah. about it yeah uh, okay well before we go on any longer let's let's wrap it up here um yeah i got like it. subscribe go over to uh spotify and itunes please leave a review helps so much with the algorithm uh patreon we got a patreon page patreon.com slash really ftv look us up on all the social medias the twitters and the facebooks and the uh other stuff real yep. af tv just yep. look it up yep real like fish and real yep. uh, and uh shit what am i forgetting oh oh please subscribe to the youtube channel if you're listening yes. to this on podcast services and you're subscribed or you you know you already are hooked up to the podcast please go over to youtube look us up youtube.com slash at real AF TV real like fish and real and hit the subscribe for us, please. That'd be great. The YouTube channel, it's growing steadily, but we need more subscribers on there to get the numbers to do uh, things where we can start doing other things with it. That would be super awesome. Awesome. And we would be very thankful for that. Um, yes. You know what? One thing we didn't cover, Tim, What's we that? didn't talk about it all. Smash Bros. Ooh, yeah, Smash Bros. Smash Bros. is a fun one, but that one, that game.